So apparently, you, you guys have been sending me this video. It's a critical video. And apparently he ended up dunking on John Doyle, the little Nazi dweeb. This is a crossover I would never expect, but it's f***ing happened. I don't really know what background to give to this. I mean, Critical's huge, and John Doyle's just this, like... He basically does a podcast and a bunch of videos where he does Nazi propaganda, but from the perspective of, like, this LARPing 1940s, like, you know, uh, hu husband guy. He really wants to be the new Nick Fuentes, pretty much. Like, he, he really wants to take up, like, the mantle of what Nick Fuentes used to be, where he doesn't have enough riz with the Zoomers to actually pull it off. But he just, he doesn't have, like, Nick Fuentes is a scrawny nerd in his general, like, aesthetic, but he kind of gives off the vibe of someone who's a little bit more, uh, I guess, authoritative than he is. But John Doyle just doesn't give, he doesn't have the vibe of somebody who can speak authoritatively. So while he is successful, he is nowhere near as successful or influential uh, in the far right as uh, Nick Fuentes. He has not claimed the role of the new Nick Fuentes, sadly for him. Anyway, I don't really know what else to say other than let's check this out. I'm curious to see uh, how hard Critical dunked on this guy. Loud. But I've recently found a great guilty pleasure that I've been consuming like junk food. It's those ridiculously cringe podcasts where a few dudes, pseudo-intellectuals, bring on a bunch of women and have the worst debates of all time. It's a forsaken- Okay, chat. If we still have time after this video, I want you guys to dig up a segment, like a 15-20 to 20 minute segment, from Just Pearly Things. I have seen this woman from time to time on Twitter and clips of her. I think it's time that we gave her the Zan treatment. She's the chick that, like, does the podcast. Pearl, I think her name is. Just Pearly Things, I think it's her, like, podcast name or whatever, her YouTube name or her Twitter name or whatever. Like, if you can find a good clip to dunk on there, that would be good content. Because I've been meaning to dunk on those Manosphere podcasts for a while. Yeah, she's a big Sneeko and Andrew Tate fan. Like, she's one of the biggest pick-me's you'll ever see. But because of her act, like, she actually has such a lukewarm IQ, I think she might actually believe that shit. In Wasteland, where normal thinking goes to die, a thunderdome of delusion. It is brain melting. It reminds me of those old PSAs for the dangers of smoking cigarettes and they'll like open up someone's chest and be like, this is what your lungs look like when you smoke. And it's like yellow and oozing covered in this like disgusting slime and it's very fucking yucky. This is like that, but instead of showing you your lungs on cigarettes, it's your brain when watching this content and it's fucking revolting. Like it is actual brain rot and I can't look away and goes into a marriage and has kids. Oh no! 19, no! Destiny, Melina, Pixie, and... I don't know who the other two women are. They probably... They're probably there to agree with the podcast hosts. You know what's crazy? Apparently, the person who drew... You know what's hilarious about this, like, Manosphere podcast having, like, the meme paper cups like the zoomer meme paper cups that everybody recognizes but zoomers like turn anything that's recognizable into a meme um in the same way like you know how like the uh the like play mat that every kindergarten american kindergartner seems to remember where it's like the, the like the little town with the road and the houses like a lot of like commentary youtubers that make like zoomer like commentary type content will have like one of those up in the background or, or whatever and make memes like it it's basically like take a thing that zoomers recognize from childhood and like memeify it and that's the joke um and the funny thing is this extremely recognizable pattern on the paper um uh cups pretty sure that was designed by a woman and not only a woman but a woman who is a secretary at the company that manufactures said paper cups she drew it with, um, charcoal. With charcoal, uh, uh, like, uh, what, what's it called? Not charcoal. Um, it's like, they, it is charcoal, but it's like the colored charcoal things that you like. She, it was a woman that made it. So, I will say, 
it is really funny that one of the co most common talking points these podcasts um, push. Yeah, oil pastels. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Um, one of the most common talking points that these uh, podcasts push is that women don't accomplish anything of like renown or uh, you know you know utility or use to society, and yet the cups that, that they're all like having at the table, and they chose to get these cups this design because of the meme. Um, that design was done by a woman. An underpaid secretary woman who's, like, scarcely credited for that design, despite its overwhelming recognizability. Sorry, just a little bit of trivia I thought I'd throw in. 1920, and then um, a year into the relationship, it gets really, really abusive. From who? Would you... From both. This is so uh, rare. Anyone, it's anyone so really. Rare. Go, on. Happen. go on, go on. Just, it, my, my point is, I'm just, yeah, even though it might be rare from what you guys think. It is. Uh, I already just find this painful. She's asking a very simple question and setting it up talking about abuse. And already the, the dudes here are like, this is ridiculous. This is exceptionally rare. This is damn near science fiction. Abuse? Oh, Thanks for the never rain. even heard of it. That's like winning the lottery twice level of astronomical odds. Abuse is... <laughs> It is very uncommon, very rare. As a way of trying to like kind of shut it down already, like I don't know how much. Like, apparently, critical hasn't seen a lot of uh, of your average like dude bro podcast content. But like one of the most common beliefs you'll find when you get a bunch of white dudes together on a podcast to talk about their opinions on women is they believe that women have it like beyond easy. Um, okay, I was watching an episode of PKA recently, the Painkiller Already podcast. It's my favorite podcast, and it's not because of their political values. It was an older episode of PKA where they had Boogie on, and at one point, like, in passing, while making, like, an argument, Boogie says, if I see, like, someone who's, a, like, left-leaning online say, um, you know, sometimes it sucks to be a woman... I'll drop that a like, because, you know, generally I think that's that, that can be true, right? And all the guys in the podcast are like, no, no, it doesn't suck to be a woman. When does it suck to be a woman? And, like, Boogie goes on to tell a story about, like, his wife being sexually harassed in front of him. And they're like, I've never witnessed something like that before. I've never seen something like that before. And they go on to, um, they go on to tell stories about how all the women they've met... Uh, b like just kind of believe, like believe that uh, it's a, it's goes without saying that the guy they're with would pay all of their bills and their rent and buy dinner and and pay for everything. Women have everything paid for. They get free vacations anywhere they want to go. It's this very uh, overwhelmingly common idea among a lot of men, even outside the incel sphere, that life as a woman is easy because they as a man are willing to do anything to get pussy. So they assume that every woman must be willing to take that, uh, uh, you know, advantage, quote unquote, um, to its fullest and do in their mind. And, and thus that advantage existing is like uh, negates any possibility of there being like uh, uh, any level of disparity to this day. Uh, it's just, it, I, I just don't know, but maybe Critical hasn't seen as much of, like, the podcast sphere, but, yeah. A lot of these people unironically think that things like women being sexually assaulted or abused is, uh, you know, basically overblown. You're choosing something very fringe and outlandish. Abuses. It's like a unicorn. It almost doesn't exist. But anyway, crazy lady, go on with your hypothetical abuse thing, or, or whatever you called it. It's just trying to downplay it, which I think is just cringe. If it would happen, what would you recommend for those people to do? Would they divorce, or do you want them to keep going in the relationship? Keep going. You can't divorce. I mean, that's not a real thing. Uh, you can, like, separate. See? His Catholic background shines through. He yeah. knows. That's John Doyle, by the way. <laughs> you, can't divorce. You, can, you can separate, but you can't actually divorce. That's not a real thing. Even though it might be like physically yeah, abusive? Because you got to endure. People are too... You want to stick in the relationship? People are just... See, I mean, like, look, people I'm nowadays be are just... Everybody quits. Everybody gives up. It's too hard. I'm this XYZ. This is why I'm special, so I can fuck up this entire situation based upon me being special. The clown puts himself front and center here. You're looking at the chief entertainment for this episode. I like this girl in the background who doesn't want to be here. Episode, 
fucking discount Walmart brand Sal from Impractical Jokers here. His name's Jonathan, and let me just tell you, he's got some opinions, and man, oh man, are they a stinker. <laughs> so, I the question is very this simple. Guy. If there's an abusive relationship, an abusive marriage, should the marriage end? You know, if the woman is being abused, or even if the man is being abused. The woman who asked the question, her name is Melina, and she doesn't just make it exclusive to women getting abused. Men can also be victims of abuse, something that uh, Jonathan heavily disagrees with. We'll get to that later on. But... He is saying that, oh, if it's an abusive relationship, you have to endure. This is the problem with snowflake society now. Everyone's such a pussy, so they'll ruin a marriage because they think they're so special. You absolute fucking troglodyte. <laughs> I don't know if it's, like, as obvious to you guys as it is to me, but the fact that the right, um, and, and popular figures among the right, have gotten to the level of mask-off engagement that normies are, uh, and I would say critical is like the quintessential normie, right? Like, he, he is very much not involved with politics. He maybe sometimes comments on it when it's so prevalent and so culturally relevant that he can't avoid it. But when he does get involved with it, when, when people in the normie sphere do get involved with it, it's a very clear indication of where the general political leanings of internet culture are. Because people tend to jump on bandwagons. And this indicates to me that right now the internet is starting to lean at least the normie cultural aspect of the internet is starting to lean a little bit more towards being like against this whole sphere of content obviously there's like the sneeko is a cuck stuff there's the andrew tate is a sex trafficker stuff there's the fact that like people are now learning that these manosphere podcast bros are just a bunch of scamming uh, misogynistic assholes who hold like horrific beliefs um, I think videos like this indicate to me that we're going to see a much larger pushback against content creators like this, not just from lefty, con like, you know, streamers and debaters and whatnot, but from normie content creators, because now these absolute buffoons are in the crosshairs of people who just see weirdos and want to make content about weirdos. They don't care about the political affiliations or the political leanings. Charlie's making videos on these people because they're weird and stupid. Not because he's left-leaning and he disagrees with them politically. And I think the fact that, uh, you know, someone as large and influential as him is, uh, is being, you know, motivated to talk about this in this way is a good sign. I think it's a good sign. <laughs> it's not about being special. It's about not getting beat the fuck up in a marriage. There's, there's no excuse for abusing your spouse, whether it's physical or mental. Like, it's the most... There is a right answer to this question. And the answer is yes, the marriage should end if it's abusive. A hundred percent. Whether it's the woman or the man being abused, it should straight up end. There's no enduring. It, this critical. isn't one of those situations where it's like, ah, you know, there's greener pastures once you get through a couple of the black eyes and broken bones. You know, my husband may have beat the fuck out of me a couple nights ago, but he also took me to a really fancy steakhouse and I had an absolute banging filet. So, you know, all of the abuse was worth it and I'm, I'm a little happier today. It's, it's ridiculous. This is honestly making me concerned. My heart is breaking for whatever woman he's in a relationship with. I'm imagining this guy treating relationships like it's Fight Club. Eh, if my partner can't roll with my knuckle sandwiches without crying about it and she wants to leave for it, well then good riddance to her toots. Jesus Christ, special snowflake. Wait until Critical finds out these people represent an entire political party in this country. It's actively, like, rallying to ban divorce, gay marriage... Uh, fucking contraception and, uh, abortion. Hooks can't handle a few of my right hooks. <laughs> Ridiculous. That's frightening. That is a frightening mentality. That you're telling someone to just endure physical or even mental abuse in a relationship. And calling them, like, sp like a special snowflake or a pussy if they, they don't. That's crazy. And also his cohort there, the goofball he's in cahoots with, who's like, Man, divorce isn't real. Divorce is make-believe. It's it's hocus-pocus. There's no such thing as divorce. Yes, if you're getting abused, you can't divorce, obviously. It's, this, is, this is a wild episode. And the reality is people just haven't learned to f endure. There have been hard times in relationship. I'm sure you guys had hard times in relationship. Any relationship has hard times. Okay. And it is what it is. You need to push through and you need to endure. Because we're in this... Abused? Hold on. Because what we're in this situation now, like, where everybody's just creating this like super nuanced like one percent example of like well what if the kids 
transgender black and abused and he's a black lives matter supporter like cool okay yeah. i get like that one minute no, but I'm situation for anyone that might be in that situation what would you recommend okay you you're, you're, I'll, tell you what, I'll, I'll tell you what endure. i don't that's i'll tell you what endure just, i'll tell okay. you what i would do a lot of diarrhea fell out of his mouth on this one here so there's there's a lot to break down he had a like an actual episode of psychosis there he just started spitting shit that never even came up it Notice how, by the way, during these, like, Manosphere podcasts, there's, like, constantly massive donations. Like, $210 donated right here. Like, there's just constantly huge donations of money coming in. The right has a fucking racket on a scale that is unthinkable right now to anything that lefties could accomplish. Like, there are very few left-wing institutions, not even institutions, but left-wing creators online um, that are able to, like, reach the, the level of, like, influence and have the amount of money and power that institutions have uh, in order to reach people like these random Manosphere podcasts tend to. Like, there's so much money in peddling right-wing beliefs to angry, frustrated young white men. I'll tell you what endure. Just, I'll okay. tell you what I would do. A lot of diarrhea fell out of his mouth on this one here. So there's there's a lot to break down. He had a like an actual episode of psychosis there. He just started spitting shit that never even came up. It's a very simple question. It really wasn't nuanced. She just said in an abusive relationship, should the marriage end? It really doesn't get more simple than that. A fucking child could understand the question. There there wasn't anything about like all these nuance that you bring up. But anyway, Smash Mouth has his meltdown there for a second, but his message is still the same. No matter what, you gotta endure. <laughs> you gotta endure the abuse. He even has the chutzpah to equate abuse to just a hard time in a relationship. As if it's just some little obstacle, little hiccup that every relationship goes through. I love Critical's re- like, this is somebody who does not, like, indulge in internet politics. This is a guy who I've seen talk about his, like, perception of the political, this, like, uh, uh, in, like, dichotomy in this country as two sides that just care about, like, uh, tribalism and, and winning and, and team sports. He has a very limited understanding of, like, what the actual reality of political engagement is in this country, and he's now being hit with the stark reality of what the right stands for, and, um... It's it's bewil it's bewildering him, and it's fun to see his reaction. Brother, abuse is not a hard time in a relationship. That is a fucking crime. That is when a relationship ends, should end. I wouldn't want my daughter in that situation, quite frankly. And I understand the argument to endure because I have people close to me who grew up in abusive households, and it lasted for periods of time, and it was a phase, and they endured through it and they ended up raising healthy, successful families. Their faces really tell the whole story here. This, this reaction's pretty on par with that statement. Abuse is not a phase. It shouldn't be a phase. This isn't a normal thing. There's, there's no reason to start normalizing abusive relationships as something every couple needs to go through or will go through. Abuse isn't acceptable. Full stop. Like, that's, that's where... This is a really easy... The thing you're forgetting, Critical, is that abusive relationships are borderline the norm within conservative dating and marriages. Um, in fact, the idea that uh, the man has ownership over the woman and the woman is subservient to the man is a fundamental, uh, you know, moral uh, uh, ascription or prescription, sorry, of, um, of marriage in the conservative worldview. Uh, the father owns the daughter. And then eventually the father hands off the daughter to her husband. That's why, like, the, the father, like, brings the daughter down the aisle to her, to the groom. Because the do the husband, like, the, or sorry, the father owned his daughter before. Like, that was his daughter. But now, the father is entrusting another man with his property, with his, with his girl. And now that is his woman, the groom's woman. It's the entire, like, prospect of marriage, even in so far as the ceremonial aspect, is based in the idea that um, particularly young women are owned by their fathers until a man who said father approves of, ideally in the conservative worldview, comes along to, uh, you know, become the new father, I guess, to, to basically fulfill that role, quote-unquote. 
pedocon theory yeah no, no no they like a lot of conservative dads as well you'll hear them say i want to make sure that my daughter ends up with a man like me and sometimes you can tell what they mean is like they want to be a good dad and a good man and like have their daughter end up with a good man too but it it, it really indicates they have a very uh you know unhealthy obsession with their child's dating life and it's always their daughters too it's always their daughters it's never their sons their sons they if their sons were out getting women as long as their sons aren't out getting anyone pregnant they don't care but if it's their daughter they've got to protect their daughter's you know whatever because they see that as their property easy slam dunk for these dudes to answer should a marriage end when it gets abusive whether for the woman or the man and the answer is easy. It's yes. A relationship isn't something where there should be an abusive phase. If there is an abusive partner, that partner needs to seek legitimate help and get help for controlling whatever violent urges or impulses they have. But that doesn't mean that the other partner needs to stay in the relationship while they're getting that help. Especially not if there's children in the household, because not only is it dangerous for the partner, it's dangerous for the kid to be around as well. I think it's very simple. I don't think- Conservatives don't believe in the concept of child abuse, Charlie. I'm sorry. I- I- it, it's it's so fun to see normies get exposed to the blatant evil of conservatives conservatism when the right goes mask off because he's trying to moralize a reactionary right now like if, if one of those guys were there talking to charlie right now they just call him like oh, an overly sensitive cuck you can't moralize these people they're not driven by the idea of trying to achieve some sort of like mutual like shared happiness among as many humans as possible they are proudly evil selfish narcissistic self-serving people they they are evil and proud of it. it it's always interesting to see someone who's sort of like a genuinely centrist leaning person who's not really into politics get exposed to how like i so for example my friend ethan has a whole discord server of his friends who are just really not into politics but sometimes I show them what the right's been up to. And they're like generally left leaning. There's a few people that in there that are trans and a few that are LGBT just generally. So it's like it's certainly a more left leaning ish space. It's just not very political, if that makes sense. Right. It's an accepting like, you know, diverse space, but it's not political. If that makes any sense. But sometimes I'll be like, yeah, so I just finished stream. I covered this today. And I'll like share my screen and show some conservative insanity. And just seeing their reaction, people who are not into politics, whose like only exposure to politics is through me talking about what I, you know, covered today or, or that given stream. And seeing how blown away they are at the blatant evil of these conservative figures. It... It brings me hope that really all it takes for us to beat the right is to make the worst of them as visible as possible. I think it's that nuance. Abuse just isn't acceptable. Like, it, it, that's a, a super easy thing for a normal person. At least visible in a critical way, not in a platforming way. I feel I should clarify. It's an answer, but we've cultivated this culture online where everything needs to be like a debate even on the simplest topics. Like, you just saw Smash Mouth have that meltdown, like, oh, you're getting into all this crazy 0.1% example nuance of abuse and then all of these other factors, like, out of nowhere. When that wasn't even what was discussed. It is the easiest black and white question. To an extent. So I mean, you they the would say that families. to stick in those relationships that might be abusive to everyone involved and a child, if there's a I'm child. not saying, like, hey, is. stick in the extreme. relationship and get the shit beat out of you by a husband. I'm not an extreme. I'm just, I'm just asking you what you believe. I'm, I'm just telling you. I, I, even I'm if not it's a small extreme thing, I'm just asking you what you think if you should stick in that relationship or not. It's 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 such... Look at that, another $100 donation. These people are rolling in insane amounts of money I, I like I, I don't know what it is about making conservative content that makes people like just just fucking pour their wallet out for you I guess that it's it's like the the demagoguery makes like I, I don't even know
it is such an extreme example that I can't give a prescription for what other people should do. There is, there is an element. God damn it. It's not even an extreme example. If you just Google it for like 15 seconds, there's so many different studies conducted on the topic. And according to a lot of the different numbers, all of which are a little different, but most of them agree that at least 20% of all marriages are abusive at some point in time. And that's just in reported cases. Like, it's not an extreme example. It's really not. But even if it was, it doesn't even change the question. Like, even in the extreme example here, it's still a very easy answer that, yes, that marriage should end. There is a problem. Now, this guy here is trying to play nice with everybody, so he's like, oh, yes, even this goober over here talking about endure, I mean, there's almost an element of something salvageable of his point. When there's not, like, there's no excuse, like, you shouldn't be enduring abuse, like, under any circumstance, but he's really trying to give an olive branch over there for some fucking reason. But this guy is at least admitting, like, he wouldn't want his daughter in that. So he does outright say, like, yes, a woman shouldn't be getting the shit beat out of her in a, in a, in a marriage or relationship and she should leave. He at least will concede that, whereas the other two guys still for some reason fight tooth and nail that, nah, there's really no reason to be leaving. Like that. Do you have opinions about third trimester abortion? It's yes. terrible. Listen, it, it's it's okay, terrible. Okay, look at how quickly you can do it. Do you know how terrible. rare third trimester abortions are? They're also really they rare, are. but you immediately had a visceral reaction to that, yeah. right? There are households where parents are abusive to children. Like, that's not like an unfathomable thing. But for you to have that immediate visceral reaction to a type of abortion... Conservatives see abuse of children as discipline. You can't abuse your own property. That's so incredibly rare. But yeah, then when but it's I like, mean, we're well, talking about, have... like, a guy, like, getting drunk and, like, you know, beating, be beating his wife occasionally even. versus, like... I actually think that was a really good point from Destiny there. Like, you have a very quick reaction to another extreme example. Why do you not have that same energy when it comes to abusive households? And then the guy starts making some shit up like, ah, we're talking about a guy getting drunk and maybe putting his hands on his wife. Where is that coming from? The question was so simple. They're making up like a whole fanfic plot line in their head about what was asked when it was really super simple. Abusive household, should the marriage end? Like, I actually wonder if she had even just said something even more simple and broad, what the response would have been. If she had asked, do you guys think abuse is bad? I wonder what they would have said. I wager that they would have been like, okay, we need to define what abuse is okay, because yeah, all these yeah. special snowflakes have weird definitions for abuse. He's catching on. Charlie's catching on to what these people are like. I'm really curious to see if Charlie's going to start delving into politics. Not like becoming a political creator, but if we're going to see him talk more about, like, figures on the right, um or just in politics in general, and giving his takes on them. Because right now, this video, while it is political, from Charlie's perspective and from the average, like, critical fan's perspective, this is not a political video. This is, like, just their favorite YouTuber dunking on some random weirdo podcaster online. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if Critical's gonna do more content like this, if he's kind of, like, started down... A path of sort of like uh uh like getting into to learning about how fucking insane the right is because there is a whole like lineup of insane right wing figures ripe for someone like critical to dunk on like can you imagine critical dunking on Matt Walsh? I mean, like I feel like he would if he knew who Matt Walsh is and like what he was up to and what he was saying and why it was wrong and, and why it was fucked up. But my question is, do you think Critical is, like, starting down a road of, like, finding that stuff out and potentially making content that's, like, more uh, uh, influenced by his, I think, slightly biased on the favor of the left, I, I would say, for his politics, but generally pretty left-leaning? Send him a Matt Walsh video to react to. Did you see the Matt Walsh baby diaper doll they were selling? Yeah. Yeah, no, we covered that earlier. So let's start really getting into the nitty-gritty of what is abuse? Even though it's so easy, abuse is just bad, and an abusive relationship is bad. <laughs> I don't know what's so hard about it. I, I don't know what's so hard about them just admitting that. Could there but, possibly well, okay, so, yeah. so, so, so yeah. let, let me ask you guys, in the Catholic Church, I know that there's like annulments for marriages and stuff. Are there that no, was a mistake. Are there no exceptions for like if a guy is beating his wife constantly? No, there are, but now... Or uh, a woman could as well, right? Well, hold on, hold on. Well, there's yeah. also yes, a distinction could, drawn between... If a, a woman's beating a dude, that Hold guy. on, hold on, hold on, guys. Oh, man, blubbery-ass Jonathan there just got saved big time by the guy in the middle. 
he wanted so badly to say that if a man's getting beat by his girl, then he's a pussy or he's like a weak bitch or something. He wanted so badly to try and get that kind of bravado out there. Sad to see that this mentality still exists somehow, that men can't be the victims of abuse. I thought we got rid of that stigma years ago. Jonathan's supposed to be a men's self-help guru. Now the red pill movement's guru. pushing it. How? Actually, how? It's divorces that are initiated by women, Brian? 78. 80%. 78. 80%. 80%. And what percentage of those women have college degrees? Well, it jumps to 90% if they're college educated. Yeah. Not real. Brian, please present the stats to the class. What percentage of divorces are initiated by women? 80%. Thank you, Poindexter. That's sickening. 90% if they're mm -hmm. college educated, I rest my case. That's mm -hmm. why I only marry 18-year-olds now. They're too young to have a college degree, thus they can't divorce me. Oh no, man. They're, a they're aiming lower than that, my dude. You're being a little too generous there. You're aiming a little- you're, you're, They're aiming lower than that, my friend. <laughs> he's making fun of them. That's- He's obviously being sarcastic, Warhunt. Um, but like... Yeah, I, I, I'm liking this video a lot. I can see why you sent it to me. This is good. Charlie's posting based right now. What does this have to do with anything? Okay, so you don't want to marry college-educated women? You want to marry dumb women? Like, I don't know. What You, you want to just marry a lobotomite sex doll? Cool, like, who cares? It doesn't matter. This has nothing to do with the core question anymore. It's gone fully off the rails and unhinged. They're so focused on picking apart divorce itself. So now they're spouting these stats and making each other mad. So one of the dudes is like, real. And then the other guy is taking a huge deep breath. <sniffs> Why I oughta. Just hearing that number's making me mad enough to put hands on my spouse because she might have considered a divorce at some point. Like, it's it's ridiculous. This has nothing to do with what was asked. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, I, agree, another, I agree with that. I want to ask but, one okay. more scenario, okay? Please. Oh, what about if... Uh, I was giggling so fucking hard because you can hear, I'm pretty sure it's Jonathan go, oh, Jesus. When she says she wants to ask another scenario. Why are you even here? The whole point is to communicate with the women, your guests, right? To ask them stupid questions and shit. Like, if, if you're so bothered with them talking, what the fuck are you even doing there? Two people sorry, get married sorry, to have a kid and then the wife starts cheating. Do you think they should divorce? Absolutely. They should yeah. divorce them? <laughs> Jesus himself you don't said. Think it wasn't Jesus, hold on, hold on. Adultery. Jesus himself said. And you could like said, work things through, right? Jesus himself said in, in cases of adultery, divorce is So you permissible. think the divorce is worse than physical abuse? No. For the children? For cheating, sorry. You think that cheating is worse than physical abuse? abuse. For the sorry. children, yes. I actually let out a full belly laugh. So she brings up cheating and, uh, and unanimously like, yes, uh, obviously you have to divorce when, when the woman's being a whore. If you've got a slut for a wife, you gotta fucking divorce that harlot, that harpy, duh, are you stupid, lady? Absolutely you have to divorce there. After they spent like six minutes about, well, actually, divorce is one of the most evil things that can ever happen. Divorce is unacceptable. Physical abuse, okay, abuse- Oh, Vashray, thank you, man, I appreciate it. Welcome, everybody, hopefully you enjoy your stay here. We're reacting to Critical's new video right now. He dunked on this Manosphere Red Pill podcast that had John Doyle on it. And uh, I am surprisingly impressed. Like, I did not expect to see Critical coming out with, like, you know, swinging this hot uh, against these Manosphere Red Pill types. I'm actually pretty happy to see this. I think it's a good omen. It's a good omen, chat. It's a good fucking omen. Welcome, Voshites. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hopefully you enjoy your stay here. You, you have to endure, because you can't divorce. But then when it's cheating, it's like, yeah, you gotta divorce. Jonathan even says crucifixion is warranted. I'm sure he's just being exaggeratory, but he does point blank say that cheating is worse than abuse for the kids. Which is a wild take. Both are awful. Uh, your father beating your mother or your mother beating your father in front of your kid is just as damaging as one of them being unfaithful. They're, these are both horrible things, both of which should end in divorce. But for some reason, they seem to only have a real visceral response when it comes to cheating. And then the guy in the middle even gets immediately religious, like, well, in the Bible. In the Bible it says, you know, when, when cheating's on the table, that's when divorce is absolutely necessary. Well, what the fuck? I, I will note, by the way, that, like, every time Melina asks a question, um, like, a very reasonable question, for the record, you'll get, like... The last question that she asked, like, what if the woman cheats? Uh, the response from John Doyle was just a single word. 
crucifixion. And I think I think you're supposed to think he was joking, but I don't think he was joking. Leveling fishing in the Undercity? I'm at Ratchet right now, dog. You think this is the Undercity? This look like the Undercity? Look, the Bible also doesn't preach for beating the fuck out of your spouse either. I I'm sure you can also divorce in a case like that, so why didn't we get biblical when abuse was brought up? Why did we start trying to justify different levels of abuse and it might be a phase where it's going to get better after and this and that? Dude even wove a whole fanfic about like, yeah, we're talking about a man who gets drunk and maybe occasionally hits his wife. Like, what the fuck? Like, why are you making excuses for abuse and not for cheating all of a sudden, right? Like, and Melina even calls that out. She's like, oh, well, what about, like, working through it or, you know, maybe the cheating's a phase. And like, no, 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 absolutely not. Cheating is the end-all, be-all. This is crazy. Like, I was absolutely howling with laughter when we got to this segment in the podcast. Absolutely not. I think, I'm not going to say this is worse than that. Divorce is worse than the children. I already said, I already said that if a woman's getting abused, yeah, I think she should leave. Like, if it's a, if it's a brief temporary thing, like. What if it's mental abuse? Dude, I would fucking love SC with a $2 super chat. Think it would be different if the man cheated? My reaction, my response to that is, I would love. Like, do you have any idea how dope it would be if I had the Life is Strange rewind power? Imagine if I was, if I could debate conservatives with the Life is Strange 1 rewind power. Like, ask a Nazi that I'm debating a question, see what his answer is, rewind, Ask another question, find out if he's hypocritical, and then rewind again, and then, like, determine my next move knowing that he's a hypocrite. Zan, you just want to win even harder? Dude, imagine how dope that would be. That is basically the gameplay of Life is Strange 1, though, with that rewind mechanic. It's, like, constantly winning debates by using time travel to, to like, go into every conversation with information you shouldn't have. <sighs> Okay, now it's less cut and dry. If it's, if it's you're getting your right. child up. I think there's a small chance that Jonathan may have misunderstood the question. He may have thought he heard, is divorce worse than abuse? And that's what he was saying, that divorce is worse than abuse for the kids. Which is still a fucking stupid take, so I'm going to tackle that one as well. What the fuck, man? You think that somehow kids witnessing their parents beating the shit out of each other is somehow less damaging than if they had just gotten divorced? You've got some issues you need to work through, my goodness. And then also, that lady that's behind them is saying that it's less cut and dry when it comes to mental abuse. Why? Abuse is abuse. What, what are you talking about? So far, up until this point in the episode, she hasn't said too much. She mainly just kind of agrees with everything the guys say, but she says it's less cut- Yeah, these podcasts like Red Pill Bros hire like sort of this gaggle of, um, of like attractive women. To sit there and like yes like yes and nod at everything that they say um believe it or not like that all, all you really do need to do to convince a bunch of teenage boys that your arguments about how to get women and like women's psychology are accurate is to pay a bunch of women to sit there and like agree and like young teenage guys will unironically think these are a bunch of like turncoat women who are like revealing the dark evil secrets that these horrible bitches uh uh have tried to hide from you their true nature you know and, and it's just a bunch of women that have been paid to be there <laughs> to nod along to everything they say cut and dry when it comes to mental abuse which leads me to believe that she thinks it should be cut and dry when it comes to divorce yeah they only physical abuse here. but she didn't say anything she didn't chime up and say like hey i agree the marriage should end then. She just stayed silent because I guess she was just looking for things to fight them on as opposed to agree with, which I think is always such a weird component of these debates where if you agree with your opponent, you're apparently losing or you lose points by doing so, which is so fucking backwards. And that's why I think debates in general are kind of worthless because it's never about changing someone's mind. It's always about just cementing your own beliefs and never faltering and never changing perspective on anything so nothing good ever really comes oh, no, from it except for just general bro. entertainment as a spectator hey soak done left good to see you buddy oh thank you for the uh anonymous tier one sub to orfeo333 over on twitch and this one had me giggling so i wanted to talk about it a little bit that's it see ya this is oh dope
That was a good video. I did not expect to see such a, like, thorough and very, well, obviously I expect it to be well-made and funny, but I didn't expect to see such a thorough takedown of, like, the red pill thought process out of Charlie's video. I expected maybe, like, a little bit of dunking on... Uh, on like the fact that what they're saying is like very evidently ridiculous well i i didn't expect like a very clear uh you know like philosophical debunking of what they say and what they believe he even seemed to understand like the kind of people they are and the things that they they tend to think i will never play a grind game that is for homosexual people chat Soak Dunn left is a heterosexual who will not play classic WoW. I would like to announce once again, Soak Dunn left is a heterosexual who will not play classic WoW. <laughs> I think that's where I'll end the segment. <laughs>